Hello and welcome back to the About to Break podcast. I'm your host, Taylor Hughes, and this is episode 138 with my buddy, Jonathan Bowles. Uh, Jonathan's a good dude. This conversation was so fun. I am, I'm so delighted to share it with you, and I'm so grateful that you take the time to sit and listen. Uh, this is a good one. This is one of those ones that um, Jonathan's one of those guys I knew back in the day, back in my days of being a youth pastor. Some of you right now just realized I was a youth pastor and now my face makes sense to you. (laughs) But years ago, I was in a local church ministry before I uh, ran away and joined the circus to become a full-time comedian and magician. Jonathan Bowles uh, was also a pastor at a church, even more, I feel like more churchy than I was because he was in Oklahoma. And then like, I don't know, six years ago, we tried to do a show in LA and I was uptight, and it, it, I, we, we talk all about it. We get into it. It's a great conversation. You're going to love it. But Jonathan is one of those guys who is just incredibly inspiring. Like, you can't leave a conversation with him not fired up and encouraged to go out and, like, change the world uh, for the better and do something good. And he's, a, he's an incredible entrepreneur. He's a little bit crazy, like a good kind of crazy, the kind of crazy that we all need because, uh, you know, times are crazy. And so we're never going to survive, in the words of Seal, unless we get a little crazy. I feel crazy right now. I don't know where this intro is going. Other than Jonathan's a great guy. You're going to love the show. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting us on Patreon. If you have not yet gone over and checked out our Patreon, it's pretty awesome. Patreon.com forward slash about to break. I'm posting tons of video and extra episodes and cool stuff over there. And I want to thank you to all of our friends who are new supporters. Thank you to Rob Balchunas, our newest supporter of the show. Uh, it, it, it always means a lot, but right now it means a ton more. Well, it always means the same. You know what I mean? I'm grateful. I'm grateful to you all. Thank you for checking it out. All right, friends, let's get into this episode. Uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy this incredible conversation. Incredible, incre- I am a mess. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know what day it is anymore or what my name is or where we're at. But I do know that this is a great conversation with Jonathan Bowles. Enjoy it. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Something is about to break. Connecting audio. It's happening. I think we did it. We did it, man. How are you, buddy? Bro, I'm hanging in there, dude. Yeah. How about you? I'm hanging in, man. It looks like you're staying pretty busy. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you have to stay busy to keep the keep the voices <laughs> quiet, you know? <laughs> Don't slow down because then you have to, you know, sit there. Yeah, man. Have you have you always uh, been – I feel like a lot of people who came from the background we came from don't know how to stop and chill and slow down. Like, we're just – Move, oh move, no! Move, impossible. Go, go. Yeah. impossible! Like it's not just that part, right? Because even when I was a kid, I was like that. Like I was just and, always antsy. Just had to be busy doing something. Yeah, my mom used to always tell me she's like, "You are pacing like a caged lion." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, I mean that's that's exactly what's happening here. That's what I feel like." So, so yeah, I mean, there's part of it that is like definitely that's the speed i'm used to right 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 the other part is personality yeah yeah i think some of it too like when when you live your whole life that way and then right now everybody's a little panicky and a little bit like jittery and a little bit like well, i gotta do doing? something yeah but we yeah. just kind of run on that like that <laughs> that's just kind of the the pace mm-hmm. that is dialed into our right being and then just gallons yeah of coffee. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Now, are you? Hey, uh, I wore this just for you, right here. Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. Oh Bro, my goodness! Listen, this is brand new. <laughs> Last time I was in Baton Rouge, I stopped in because I know they have a gift shop. So I stopped oh, yeah. in the gift shop. Just like, what do they have in here? It's probably just a bunch of Bibles and like <laughs> videos and stuff. And they had a rack of T-shirts. And no lie, this was six dollars. Dude, I that's like, pretty economical. I, Dude, like as someone that prints T-shirts, I right. know that this shirt alone is five dollars. Right. <laughs> what, so, so was this was this like last season's model or this? Was, it was the only one they had. Okay. All they had 
were these baseball tees. But I was like, oh, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll man. It. Well, it's funny. When you first look at it, it's just, oh, that's a cool shirt. Like, you can't tell what right. it is. Yeah. And you're like, wait, is that a dove on a cross? Old Jimmy, man. That, Old so Jimmy. For, for folks who are joining and don't know, uh, Jonathan and I, and I both spent many, many years in ministry. And, mm-hmm. and now we um, we are not doing that. <laughs> Not where we were. Not where we were. Yeah, that's true. It's yes. it's funny, yes. man. It's uh, it's different. I, I tell people like I stopped being a pastor so I could help people like chase wonder and like live life and you know like I I, I stopped being a pastor so I could really take care of people. Isn't that wild, man? It's it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was a youth pastor, I was so busy being a pastor that I never like talked to, I didn't know any of my neighbors. I like didn't, you know what I mean? I never like did anything outside of the building because I was just trapped there, there doing all the stuff there did you live pretty close to the building i lived f- less than five minutes from there and Dude, what, what's what's crazy man is i live like less than five minutes from there but like we would have monday was technically our day off but like it would be mm-hmm. like the you'd get calls all day long and everything but then like yeah. tuesday morning we'd have a six thirty meeting at tuesday and then i swear 6 30 a.m 6 30 a.m and Holy then Lord. I did not see my family, like my kids, I would not see my kids till like Friday afternoon because I would be gone when they yeah. were asleep and come home and I live five minutes away. Yeah. Which yeah. is wild because now like I travel all around the country. Like I'm usually like two or three times a week getting on a plane and I see the family constantly. <laughs> like, yeah. You just learn right. a different way to live life, man. Yeah. Super uh, weird. Yeah. I always lived and I think it was like a trick. It was like a ploy. I remember when I was like young single pastor, right. They provided a home for me on the church property. They owned like six how or ni- seven. How houses. nice of them, man. Right. Right. And, and this was, uh, what state I mean, was this in? Where, where were oh, you? Louisiana. You were Louisiana, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. That's the, I lived the, up on Hope Drive. That's the epicenter. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and then when I was a married pastor living in Texas, yeah. I mean, we lived literally one exit down right off the highway so and you probably never you were never home you never saw your house oh no i mean it was it was a massive massive home i built like a little gym in my garage that ended up only really being used by interns (laughs) more people live at your house than you do (laughs) Mm -hmm. now we had two extra bedrooms that were always set up with two twin beds in each yeah yeah yeah. just people staying there all the time it's crazy, man. Dude, it's it doesn't it seem like how long ago was it for you? When did you when did you bow October out? October first, two thousand twelve was my last day ever. Yeah, because you were so like eight years. October first, two thousand twelve. So you were you were almost you're just a little over a year ahead of me. Mine was December tenth of twenty thirteen. But I remember wow. like we got together our, our mutual buddy Zach Gandra. We we got together with him. Shout out we, ZG. We did a we did a show in L A. and it was like it was real raw for me. Like Zach. <laughs> And I, and I just remember, man, I feel so bad now looking back. Cause I'm like, like you did some stand up, and it was freaking hilarious. And it was not, it was not edgy at all by any given standard, but I was, but at the the moment, man, I still had like very over the line. uh, I was, I was out of the church, but I was still like, it was so raw for me, man, that I was just like, I don't know. Like, cause there is a thing too. Like when you, when you leave an environment that's, um, it, it's just been so ingrained into you that like, this oh, yeah. is okay. This is not okay. We don't talk about this. We don't do that. And then when you leave it all of a sudden, like, it's not like you leave all of the shame and the guilt. Like mm-hmm. I, like I still, to this day, like sometimes we'll have flashbacks where I'll be like, Ooh, I don't know if that was right. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, man. So I, I do, I do owe you an apology, but it's crazy oh, how no. much, it's crazy how much that, um, it's crazy how much that like year, out does you know what i mean like the further away you get from it the the more you go like oh this doesn't really have that massive world impact that we thought it did like oh yeah yeah you realize that you were living in a dixie cup once you jump in the ocean yeah baby yeah that's exactly it no but and and i know and i've i mean zach and i we've hashed this out on his podcast (laughs) and so i'll take the opportunity as well yeah i definitely owe you an apology as well because i mean that was honestly let's be honest that was taylor's house that night it was, <laughs> it was filled you know i had a few scalawags fill in the seats oh man but that was that was like taylor's coming out party and yeah. i went up there with both barrels 
Pepe Le Pew. Yes. Popping not off. Pepe, and, not Pepe yeah. Le Pew. Who's the guy? Uh, Pico Sam. Oh, no. Yosemite Sam. It's Yosemite Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And I just, <laughs> I, uh, I let it rip. Way, way too hard oh. for the environment. And, oh, it's uh, so good. But I'll tell you what, though, man. Like thinking back about it, was it was funny, though. It was very <laughs> funny, and I want, I like, I now I want to, I want to do it again with, like, I want to do another live event with you. Whenever we are, whenever that's yes. a thing, whenever, whenever that's allowed, whenever that's allowed, <laughs> whenever it's not against the law to do the thing that I do for a living. Uh, right. <laughs> exactly. And I, even if it was allowed right now, I wouldn't do it. Like, I don't want people to die. Like, that's that's more of a concern. The secondary yeah. concern is that yeah. I have no livelihood. But, what? <laughs> but man. Put it to the side. Put it to the side. But, dude, I'm telling you, man. Like, I, we could have some fun now. We could have a lot of fun. Right? Now that I'm not so uptight. And now that I've learned the thing you learn um, – as a magician, you want your family and friends there. It's like, let's get everybody yeah. there. As a comedian, you do not want anyone in the audience you know. No, it is like cause not unless they are down to clown. Yeah, 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 man. And like you cause because here's the deal. Like, even if you know somebody, like even if you have a friend, like, okay, even if you have a friend who gets you and they get your humor and they're right there with you and they're at the same point in life, let's say you say a joke that doesn't go that great. Like I mean, right. a lot of this is trial and error. If Very you have nice. someone in the audience that you know and they do this, you know what that means. Like that, you know what I mean? You're like, oh Bad. gosh. Like yeah. I <laughs> anytime Katie's in the front row, I'm just like, oh. Like <laughs> because like you just know, like, yeah. Like she right. just she can immediately, like, with one look, let me know, like, oh, you're not doing well right now. <laughs> right. That was that was not the move. Yeah. That was not the move. Yeah. No, I I get it. Uh yeah, I think we could have a really, really, really good time. I think all of us have kind of leveled up a little bit. Yeah. We've all kind of come into ourselves a little yeah, bit yeah, more. Yeah. We've established our new flavors. Yeah, yeah. I like our new yeah. flavors, man. They're oh, fun. I love our new flavors, man. I, uh, that, I think of the- That show was so early on. It was, it was man. Everything was fresh. The one thing I am a little bit, I don't know if I should be sad about this, but like, I feel like you and Zach have overcome, like Zach used to look like a Keith Urban wannabe, like- you know what I yeah. mean? He was very like super Ed, Ed Hardy, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, lots yeah. of affliction, yeah. lots like rhinestones. Yeah, rhinestones. And now, dude, you look at him now, and he's like got a whole new look. And you got oh, a he whole like a like a black magic warlock. Yeah, yeah. Like punk rock. Yeah, like, baby. Just, yeah, baby. And he you looks you, like he jumped out of a comic book. You you have got a whole new vibe completely. I still like. I have this permanent youth pastor face. Like no matter yeah. what I do. I'm always just going to look like somebody's youth pastor, man. Uh, well, how about this? Anytime I open my mouth and say, yeah, I used to be a youth pastor. They're like, oh, I can see that. Like, How? Why? Is it on, is that on my forehead? You well, know, I'm going to have to get face tattoos or something. Yeah. I'm like, wipe that off. I feel like Zach says he used to be a pastor and everyone's like, what? And I say, I used to be a pastor. I'm like, oh, that makes, that explains a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. But, I do, I do feel yeah. like you, you know, because you, you're very involved in the wrestling world and I want to talk about oh, that, God. but I feel like that, yes. that's a good transition, man, because those are the only two worlds that call each other brother, right? <laughs> like, right. Church, you call each other <laughs> brother. A good bit. It is, man. <laughs> Use it, use it, baby. I mean, you know what I mean. That's though? a like, good bit. I love that. There's only the only way. There's only there's two only groups like, of people no. in the world that call each other brother: Christians and wrestling fans. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's a oh. T-shirt. Can we make a T-shirt? Like, uh... <laughs> dude, that could work. That could work. And you're absolutely right. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, I kind of fell butt first into the wrestling thing. It was like a. It was an accident. My were you not in wrestling, up, my, like involved in it growing up or interested in it? My dad was a chiropractor. Oh, great! And so he loves wrestlers. Back, it's a good exactly. Business. And in in Baton Rouge, where I grew up, there was uh, they always ran a territory down there called Mid South. Okay, and so all those like. Jim the Anvil Nightheart, the Bushwhackers, uh -huh. like all those old, a million dollar man, all those guys. Yeah. They would come through town and they would come and my dad would take care of them and stuff like what? that. What? And so it was just like on my radar, like Bushwhackers came to the house once. And then I'm the perfect age for Hulkamania running right. wild in my life. Oh and my so goodness. it was just on the radar. Yeah. And then when I got to be, uh, fully devoted to Christ. Yeah. I totally left all that stuff away, you know, to the side at about 13 years old. Um, and then when I came back out after a 16 year, hiatus, yeah, 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 yeah. 
uh, I was at my mom and dad's house and we were flipping through the channels one weekend, just, you know, hanging out at the house. And I saw that like, oh, look, they're replaying WrestleMania 25. Wow. wow. 25 WrestleManias. That's crazy. And we watched it and we kind of got sucked back in. Yeah. And and then when I moved out here to Los Angeles, I was like, all right, what are we going to do? You know, we sold a house. So we had a nice little chunk of money that we didn't have to go out and get jobs right away. Yeah. Um, and so I started a, a little company called Rassle Ruse, yep. which was selling underwear that's printed to look like the professional wrestling. Brilliant. Trunks. Brilliant, man. And, <laughs> and so like through a ton of little coincidences that kind of like took off. And then I pivoted that into this little pin company. And then there was a subscription box and then that went down the drain. And then it just kind of, I started to be able to do the other things that I am good at of, you know, like kind of creative consulting and, and yeah. you know, business development and growing stuff and networking and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And so now we've got like a little merchandise empire that, yeah. you know, we're hired by other companies to, you know, manage their online stores and do all that and help people start businesses. And so it just started with like this little lemonade stand, but for some reason it, and it's, and, and I finally like kind of made a correlation of like, okay. why is it that other than the brother thing, why is it? <laughs> that the wrestling thing just seems to be something that I'm just drawn to. Yeah. Ultimately my, what I love more than anything is helping somebody do whatever is in their heart to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. What do you want to do? How can I help you get there? My dream is to see yours happen. Yeah. And there is no stupider dream that a person can have <laughs> than saying, I want to be a professional wrestler because yeah. job wise, there's maybe 50 to a hundred positions in the world in like, the world yeah, yeah that yeah. are going to pay you at a high level to where you said like right. i have made it as a pro wrestler right 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 and now there's other like sure you know being a, a famous comedian or a famous this or that or a movie star or whatever that's hard but wrestlers have to destroy their bodies yeah well and there. and with like comedy or music or magic you cannot be a household name and still make a hundred grand a year Right. As a comedian or as a magician, if you know what you're doing and you do the right marketing and all of that. Like, right. Right. That is not. And so. But you can't be I, like at the VFW hall and just killing no, it, like just stacks. No, <laughs> you're, no, you're getting paid $50 a night and you're just hoping for the best. But and that's I've, I've got I have some friends that we've worked with, you know, from Southern California that, you know, in you know, one month I saw them wrestling in front of 20 people. Yeah. No, October 2017, I I saw my friend Brody King. He was wrestling in front of 20 people. Fast forward one year later, he was headlining in Madison Square Garden. You know, and it can happen like that. And we had just the tiniest, tiniest little part to do with that by helping him make his merchandise and giving it to him at like a really, really low price and helping him feed his kid while he transitioned out of like not being an electrician and a wrestler. Right. You know, that kind of thing. you know, and so we just, the uh, same story just happened with a friend, uh, from El Monte. Like he was, we sat down with him in January. We're like, Hey man, I think this is your year. How can we help you? And by November now he just debuted on WWE TV, you know? And so it's, it's just the wildest thing that somebody could do. So if I can help somebody in a small way, achieve a dream like that, yeah. then there's no problem helping somebody start a business. That's actually a good idea. And <laughs> man, and don't, and don't you feel like that's part of what like was attractive to us about like the church thing was the idea like in the in the in, in the church I stay, still say like where I was at was not a healthy place like I, I tell people yeah. all the time like I was a you know is it weird that I was a was a youth pastor turned magician you know and it's like yeah, yeah. because one part's like all about deception and the other part involves card tricks so <laughs> but. Because because the, because not all places are bad, but the one I was was at was really bad. Now here's the thing, here's the thing, man. But like while we were there, still even though like maybe the leadership wasn't doing the right thing, and maybe they yeah. weren't even having the thing because of the right intentions, good stuff still happened because you attract yeah. people with this idea of let's help the other people around us, let's make a difference in right. someone else's life, you know. Yeah. So it's no, it's I, interesting that like we even though we're not in that world that's still like a huge part of us is like wanting to help yeah. other people. Yeah. No, that was, and I think that was always it. And I think the only reason why I ended up being in that world for so long is just because I was, that's where I was born. 
Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, my yeah. earliest memories are sitting in a pew. Yep. You know, yep. I just, I, that's just how I was raised. And so had I been born in a different timeline, I mean, I'm fully aware that like, I, there was nothing I ever wanted to do other than this. Right. You know, yeah. it's, it wasn't like, I mean, of course, every kid wants to be a baseball player. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. every kid wants to, you know, I wanted even my two things are either wanted to be a bodyguard or a baseball player, you know? Oh, amazing. Dude, what Mostly were... just because of like the, the, the wind suits and the, yeah. and the Oakley glasses. You yeah. know? Uh, <laughs> so. I could see you being a bodyguard, man. You could do it. Oh, right. Dude, it's all about the attitude. Bro. It's all, all it's all, it, it's all intimidation, man. It's Love like wrestling. Me. It's pro wrestling, dude. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So no. And, and I, and, and also too, like there's always been a part of me that has been an entertainer. Yeah. And oh, that, yeah. In church world that gave me the opportunity. I, cause I mean, if you think about it, man, we've got, you know, 10 times, 10,000 hours in oh, front yeah. of crowds of people that do not want to be there. Yeah, man. I, I say it all the time. Church, <laughs> church was my open mic. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. That's where like, I learned. That's le- a room full of anybody. The, like I can guarantee you a good 30. <laughs> yeah. 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 The only, the only way you get good at anything is like giving be by being given the permission to suck at it for a long time. And like church, church, I still say it. Like I wish like right now we, we don't go to church and, but yeah. I think like my daughters are super in my, my youngest or my oldest daughter is super into like musical theater and like performance and set design. I'm like, crap, man, like church would be a good place to learn all that stuff. But I, yeah. I don't want her to get all the baggage I have <laughs> with it, you yep. know? So, yep. but it, but it is interesting, like growing up where, uh, where else, like if you want to, uh, if you want to become like a camera operator for Hollywood, who's going to let you operate like a $300,000 movie camera, a church will, exactly. if you're a like 10, will. they'll be like, you're strong enough to hold it. All right. Yep. We need you all three services. <laughs> Exactly, dude. Yeah. Exactly. That was I was just talking to somebody the other day and we we're like, there's no other world where literally anyone yeah. can climb the ladder so fast. So quickly, you man. You could be a like strung out crack addict, <laughs> show up in January and by November yeah. be teaching a class. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like no other world would allow you to progress like that. And, you know, there's positives and negatives. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Because also there's no other world which you can fall from grace so quickly. <laughs> oh, and then once you're gone, you're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If, you, if you want to have a lot of opportunities and never, never make money and not see your family, that's a great place to do it, the mega church. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so you started this company, man. So Rassel Roos, how did that come about? Like – did you just one day get this idea and then go go online and go, how do I get underwear printed? <laughs> well, so I, I mean, I'm, I'll give full credit. My ex-wife, it was her idea. Yeah. I was just going to make t-shirts. Okay. Um, and then she goes, she said, why don't you make underwear? That's all they wear anyway. Right. And I was like, huh, you're right. Yeah. And so I Googled it like pro wrestling underwear. Nobody was making it. And then I was like, okay, where do you buy blank underwear? And, right. you know, American apparel, they had it in all different kinds of colors. And then I called a friend who was a screen printer. I was like, do you think you could print on underwear? And he's like, yeah, probably. Um, and then, you know, he did a run of them and they look really bad. So I got a heat press. Yeah. And so I heat pressed them all by hand in our apartment. I've got pictures of like literally thousands of pairs of underwear stacked up in the living room. The dog is like underneath it and me just like heat pressing you know, little stars on these underwear. And, and, you know, I knew nothing coming out of church world. I mean, cause I started as a youth pastor when I was 16. I mean, I had an assistant, a secretary, all that yeah. at the time I was 18 years old on. Insane. So like, I didn't like, I was like, Oh, Hey, my oil needs to be changed. Here's the keys. Like that kind of, that's totally so spoiled. weird, man. <laughs> like I had no, 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 like, how do I do this? So I had to teach myself how to build a website. Yeah. I had to teach myself like, okay, where do you buy these things? How do you do this? And then just kind of, you know, just total DIY. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we started in August of 2014 and we sold like, I think six pairs in the first three months just total disaster. And I mean, the reaction we got online from people was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, This is ridiculous. And then <laughs> just through like a crazy coincidence, 
we ran into a former WWE champion yeah. in Beverly Hills at a breakfast spot. And I was wearing his best friend's t-shirt. Okay. And he sees me and the guy's name was CM Punk. And so he yeah. had disappeared. He had quit wrestling and nobody knew where he was. And so this was like seeing a ghost, you know, like seeing like, wow, we haven't heard from this guy yeah. since January. And you're, and you're wearing his shirt or his friend's shirt. And, yeah. Well, his best friend. And, uh, and which is a very obscure, independent, nobody would know who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we walk in, he sees me, I see him. I immediately like, okay, just going to go sit down. Like, you yeah. know, cause he's like one of my favorites ever. Yeah. And, uh, then the waitress comes over about halfway through the meal. She goes, Hey, that really good looking guy in the corner just paid for your whole table. And I was like, wow, this is this. Now I have to at least go say thank you. Yeah. 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 And so as he was leaving, you know, we kind of timed it to where we were leaving at the same time. And hey, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. It was great. My name's Jonathan. I run Rassel Roos. And he goes, I've heard of that. What? And I was like, what? Like, yeah. what in the world? He's like, oh, yeah, I saw it on, on Zach Ryder's Instagram, who's another wrestler. And, and, uh, and he's, you know, he's like, and I, you know, I was like, well, I've got some in the car. Do you want some? And he's like, <laughs> no, 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 man. I'm good. I, you want like, some underwear out of my trunk? But, yeah, right. Exactly. He's like, <laughs> No, I'm good. You're but, like, what you size know. are you? You look like you're about a. <laughs> you a look large. like a medium, punk. <laughs> yeah. and, um, so, uh, little did I know that two weeks later he would do a podcast that literally would get downloaded four or five million times over Thanksgiving weekend. That told his story of where he of where he went, why he left, all that stuff. And the last five minutes of that, yeah, they tell the story of him buying me pancakes because I was wearing his friend's shirt and that put us on the map wow. and we sold more in one weekend than we had in the first four months combined. What? And so we took that money started doing little Comic-Con events, kind of invested it back in the business. And then it just kind of took off from there. I mean, total coincidence. Like what are the chances, you know, <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, did you know that was going to happen? Like, you knew he was going to do this interview. Were you listening to no. the interview and then it, you heard yourself or somebody, you, you just started seeing people buying stuff on the website. We're like, what's happening? This is, I had, so on Thursday, on Thanksgiving day, his friend who does the podcast, he like put out a tweet that was like, Hey, interview with CM Punk is coming Yeah, tomorrow or tonight at yeah, midnight. Yeah, yeah. And I, for some reason had the weirdest feeling of just like, this dude's going to talk gonna about happen. us. So like, gonna... they're going to talk about me. Because you, you had just seen him. You had just seen him, right? I No, this was uh, this was about three weeks prior. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it had been about three weeks. And so I remember going into the bedroom, about to go to bed on Thanksgiving night. And I was like, hey, I think I'm going to – I told my ex-wife. I told her, I, was, I think I'm going to stay up and listen to this thing. Yeah. And she goes, they're not going to talk about you. <laughs> And I was like, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it was not a positive. It was a very eye rolling comment of like, you think they're going to talk about you? Yeah. And like, of course I thought they were. Yeah. So I sat there and listened to it and I was a little bit behind, but then all of a sudden my phone starts going, boop, 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 yeah, boop, yeah. all these Twitter notifications. And I'm like, Oh boy, <laughs> they're talking about me. And so when I finally got to that point of the, of the, of the podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I sat there and just started crying like, Oh my God. And then I opened the website and it was like, but it ding, but it ding, but it ding, but it Yeah. Dude. So cool. That's and amazing, I ran man. back in that bedroom yeah. and I was like, they're talking about me. <laughs> She's like, what's <laughs> happening? No what's going no on? <laughs> oh my gosh, man. That's crazy. So then all of a sudden you, you're in a bit, you're in business. Like now you're, yeah, you're doing, we're, we're on the map. That's what I like to say. That, yeah. that actually gave us a chance to like, okay, there's something here where I need to keep going. Yeah. And it, that only really lasted about another year yeah. because American apparel went bankrupt and discontinued making that underwear. Oh yeah. And so I was not at the place where, okay, I'm not going to get this produced in mass quantity overseas. Right, right, right. It's really nowhere else. So like, let me buy up as much stock as I can. Yeah. We'll go as long and, as we can. And try to find a way to pivot this into something else. Yeah. And that's when we started making little enamel pins. Yeah. And then that came into like, oh, well, if we do this for ourselves, we could probably do this for other people. And then yeah. just one thing after another, and then just relationships and here well, we talk about that, man, because I, that's one thing I've noticed. And you hear people say it a lot, like like it's all 
relationship and networking and who you know. But man, I'm telling you, in the last three years in my career, everything has come through other people. It's all come through. You did, you did something that didn't like... You said yes to an opportunity or a party or a meeting or a show that most people wouldn't leave the house to do. And then all of a sudden your whole world's different because you drove to Santa Monica to perform for five minutes. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, I I know that's like the zone you live in. So talk a little bit about that. Cause I think a lot, I think a lot of people are so much like, well, when I get an opportunity, I'm going to be there. And it's like, you got to be there before the, the, that's where the opportunities come from. Like go to the thing, do the stuff, get out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I was, I did a, another interview a couple of days back and this, this kind of came, this same idea kind of came up and it was, there was one guy that I just had in my mind of like, this is somebody that I want to work with. Yeah. This is somebody that I think, and they, they weren't big time. I could tell that they were going to be yeah. like, this is this is, this is a place, like if you were coming at it from a comedy or a magic, it's like, this is a venue that I want to get booked at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just give me five minutes. Give me one chance. Yep. And, and so I, for six months, basically threw myself at this guy. What can I do for you? Because yeah. I, all I was asking for is I said, I would like to set up a vendor table at yeah. your WrestleMania week event in New York City. This was last year. Yeah. And no, we don't really do that. No, we don't really have room. No, no. And then I just kept upping the like, well, what do you want? Yeah. Like anything. Yeah. Say wh- it. What can I do for and you? I ended up going out of my way Yeah. to like, I mean, we might have broken even on the deal, but they eventually said yes. Right. But then the relationship was there. We met face to face finally. And then a month later, I see him in Las Vegas and I'm like, you know, man, what do you, what do you do for online, online sales? Yeah. And he's like, well, nothing. I just post some pictures on Facebook. And then, you know, if somebody wants it, I go to the post office and I mail it out. And I'm like, dude, I think we might be able to help you make some money. Yeah. And like, how? Like, I don't understand. And like, we don't really do that. Like, they're like real outlaw. Like, they don't even have a website, you know, like this is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so eventually after about another two or three weeks of him thinking about it, he was like, all right, let's try it. Mm. And that's all I needed. Yeah. And we gave him a great deal. But then from that one relationship, because that thing took off, then this guy saw it mm-hmm. and he was like, hey, do you think you could do that for us? Yeah. Sure, man. Let's give it a try. Then his friend gets hired at this gigantic company and he goes into their board meetings and he says, hey, there's this guy that does this, this, and this. Yeah. I think he should be the one that we hire to do this for us. And then that's a, you know, multi-billion dollar television company, right? you know, like, and so it all started with me just saying like, Hey, like, give me a shot. Give me a chance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but even one step further behind that, had I not met this one guy, Michael Kingston, a comic book creator, he was the one that introduced me to those people in the first place. Wow. And with him, it was just, Hey, I just want to be your friend. Yeah. Yeah. And he asked me one time, he's like, Hey, do you want to come down to San Diego comic-con and help me out? I said, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I went down there, paid my own way, slept on a friend's couch for yep. a whole week yep. and just stood there and was basically his, uh, armor bearer. How about that? Yeah. For, uh, <laughs> Ar- armor uh, bearer. Armor bearer is the name in the church for the guy who walks around carrying your Bible in your, your toiletry bag looking purse. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we also had a, a little name <laughs> for them on the inside. We called them the scrote toter. <laughs> so I and I did that for a whole week. Yeah. And that's how it and then because of the relationship we formed there, when I took a week off and just came and and helped there at the booth, he was the one that introduced me to that guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then we made that deal. And then now it's it turned into the biggest deal that we could possibly ever have, you know? That's incredible, so, man. And it's all, and yeah. it's all stuff that you, you would have not gotten if you hadn't asked, no, if you hadn't yeah, gone out, if you hadn't done the thing that didn't make any money. Right. I've never, I don't think anything great, even with the story about the pancakes and, yeah, the, and yeah, the guy yeah. in the, the really, like that was a total accident, you right. know, and it was all through relationship. Yep. And, and so that's, I think the thing that I have benefited from the most is First of all, not being afraid to just do something without having any idea what you're doing. Right, right. I have right. no idea. Like put it out 
it's for sale. Figure out how to make it later. So good. <laughs> you know? So good, like, man. The only step that matters is the first one because, and we get stuck at the starting line thinking 15 steps down the road, yeah, which yeah, yeah. there, you don't even know if that's, you're even going to make it in that direction. You know, right. the only step that matters is the first one. So just figure out one thing that you can do, do that. And then the next day, do the next thing. And then just, Everything happens through relationship. Yeah. If it is not based in a relationship, then it's, I don't, I don't, I don't know any other way. Like, yeah. I mean, what am I going right. like, to put out Facebook ads? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? Well, and I want to, I want to backtrack a little bit here because you said the, the first step is the only one that matters. Like just take a, make a move. Like so many people will go like, I got this idea and it's really, um, like in your business, so much of what you do, I feel like is you, you see a, an opportunity in a moment and you capitalize on that moment right now. Like, yeah, I want to talk about the thing you did with your haircut with the tiger oh, thing coming up, which, so I want to talk about, I want to talk about that. Cause everyone who's, <laughs> if you're watching the video right now, you know, that <laughs> you know that, that Jonathan has cut his hair just like the tiger King and dyed it the same way. Um, so I want to talk about that, but here's the deal. There are people right now, the tiger King has been out for what, four weeks now. Something like yeah, that, about maybe a month. About yeah, a month. There's someone today who's still like, Oh, I got this hilarious idea with the tire king. Look, it's done, it's over. Like, yeah, you missed no, it. Over. But None. you, like, right away were like, Boom, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and probably didn't have the whole plan of what it was going to look like or what was going to no. happen. But it's just get it out there, do it now. So, can you tell us a little bit about how you got your yeah. nice new hairdo? So, <laughs> this is kind of this is this is how it happened and why it happened. So, the last week of March and the first week of April are in the wrestling world, that's our Super Bowl because right. that's WrestleMania. So yep. wherever WrestleMania is at, <laughs> yeah. everybody they in want, the world. They want all their gear. They want to be wearing the stuff. Yes. Yeah. It don't matter if it's online, in person, wherever. A quarter of a million people were about to descend on Tampa, Florida. Yep. We had, you know, so many plans. Three major companies had hired us to do all of their merchandise do all of their fan experiences, oh my God. like oh my high gosh, level man. stuff. Yeah. This was insane. And, and, and which means all... you've brought in other people. Like now you are oh, responsible for I all had these people other people that you're flying in yeah. from every corner of the United States. <laughs> yeah. I had rented an Airbnb yeah. that would hold 12 people. Yeah. Yeah. And we were just going to stack them up because on one of those days on Saturday, I was, we were going to have three different pop-ups and fan experiences going on at three different places at the same time. Plus what we were doing. Yeah. But I mean, there were shipping containers and there was, yeah. I mean, we were trying to like <laughs> ice cream trucks. I had an airbrush artist that, that was, we were going to airbrush t-shirts. I mean, just insane. Yeah. And <clears throat> nice. it was going to be the biggest grossing thing we've ever done yeah. for other people. And then for us personally. Yeah. And so when it all gets canceled, I, of course, right. I'm totally deflated. Right. My life is over. What am I going to do? Yeah. I have no ideas. We didn't plan for this. And so I'm like, well, I guess we can maybe like do a coloring book. I don't know. That's something people could do in a quarantine. Right. <laughs> and just, you know, just like, I mean, just Eeyore the donkey, man. Yeah, like, yeah, just, yeah. just totally down. But then all of a sudden I got that Tigger energy. Yeah, I buddy. I started bouncing, bro. Yeah. And uh, I, I just got like this thing in me that was like, you know what? We're doing it. Yeah. I'm going for it. I don't know how. I don't know why. And so we decided we're going to release a new product or new collection of products every day for five days. Yeah. Hey, Cause you already and, had the stuff, right? Like this was stuff. No, no, none of it existed, <laughs> okay, none of it existed okay, okay. because not like the, we had a few, we had a few pins that were already designed, yeah. but we hadn't released them yet or anything. Yeah. And, but out of the like 30 products we dropped that week, only seven of them existed previously. That's All crazy. of it was completely on the fly. And so, you know, Monday we released the coloring book and we did this virtual 5K thing where we had people all over the world sign up and like register and pay 25 bucks to get a t-shirt and a medal and go outside and run like on what? their own. <laughs> like <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, but then Tiger King Tuesday, I just got this idea of like, okay, this is really hot right now. Right. And there was this picture that had been floating around a couple weeks before the Tiger King show came out yeah. of The Undertaker at the South Carolina place. Right, right, right. And yeah. He's there in the water petting this big tiger. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's the Tiger King right there. Yeah. You know? And so we took any wrestler that had like Tiger in their name and we put them all on this like just truck stop looking poster. And so, I mean, just ridiculous. Yeah. And then we decided, okay, we'll make some stickers, we'll make a poster. And then I was like, 
And I really want to like just figure out a way to like raise some money and give back. And I think it'd be ridiculous if we did it and like the, I kind of like sacrificed my own personal well being to make it more. Right. <laughs> so I was like, if we raise a certain amount of money, I will cut my hair like the Tiger King. And then the next <laughs> level will be, I'll get an eyebrow ring. Right. And then right. the next level, well, I'll get, get the bullet hole, hole tattoo. tattoo. <laughs> And now, thankfully, no body modification beyond the haircut right. is actually happened. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> listen, we in a pandemic from, uh, you know, a very yeah. small fan base, we were able to raise like, I think, like 15, 1600 bucks. Yeah. And uh, we're about ready to go and give that to somebody. And I can't wait to roll up looking like Joe Exotic, you know. <laughs> Dude, that's but, so um, cool, man. Yeah, just and just I mean, even on I remember on the Wednesday night of that week, like, okay, we had a plan for, okay, this is what we're going to release on Thursday. And at one o'clock in the morning, one of my designers calls me up. He's like, man, I just don't, I just don't feel it. I don't think this is right. I don't, I don't think this is the, the right move. Okay. I was like, yep. All right, let's do it. You're right. I totally agree. So what should we do? Yeah. And we, we got to do something. We've already said uh, we're going to do it. Right. We already said we would, but yep. they don't know what it is. And so the next, and it ended up being like the second best selling item, you know, was the the one that we, you know, switched at the last second, literally at three o'clock in the morning when it was supposed to drop. Dude, and so, this- this, this is that creativity, yeah. that flow, and it ended up being the largest week of sales we had ever had online in the six years that I've been doing this. And yeah. all out of literally thin air. Dude, this is so good. Like if you're if you're listening to the, this right now and you're a creative individual who has had I mean, both of us, you you were just talking about your world is an event centered world. Even though you do 100%. products, <laughs> it is live events is where we make our money, you know? And I and I've been saying this for several weeks now. I feel like most of us are in a mo- most entertainers are in a holding pattern. They're not creating. They're not doing anything. They're just kind of yeah. sitting there going, "Well, I I guess I'll go on unemployment, wait to see what happens." And you know what? Do do what you got to do. But like the thing is, some people are going to come out of this, and they will come out in a totally different level because they yeah. put the time in, they put the energy in. But what you're saying about like just just speaking it like into existence saying this is going to happen this podcast this will be episode like 139 this, dude that's amazing which which is crazy to me like it's just it's crazy to me but but it happened because i said all right uh january of 2016 i'm going to start a podcast and here's the date yeah. and you can go here and get it it didn't exist i didn't even i didn't have the microphones i didn't know how to do yeah. anything you just say you're going to do it you know, this yeah. last January, a couple months ago, you you came. Thank you so much for being part of it, man. But you came to my special taping. It was and, beautiful. And 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 man, that 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 happened because a buddy, like a conversation we're having right now, we were in Nashville in August, and I was like, Man, I've wanted to do this and he you know, I want to do this special and I think I'm gonna put this stuff out, but I got all these concerns about like burning my material. And he looks at me and he goes, You told me the same thing last year. And Woo. he pulled out his phone and he's like he's like pick a date right now pick a date right now i'm putting it on my calendar and literally he went and bought a ticket to la on the day that i told him and was like yeah. i'm coming yeah. now you have to do it and yeah. that's the that's the only reason that that now i'm i'm like in post production on this special right now like yeah so it's so huge man this idea of just taking action and doing something like you you literally were in a spot where you lost a ton of opportunity and a ton of dough. Oh, yeah. We're like, let's spend more money making a product every day. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's and honestly, man, like I put the last dollar down. Like, you guys, that, yeah, we had we had kind of blocked off a lot of space for the clients that we were working with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, there was no other business going on. Yeah, and, and of course, everything is slowed down because all of our stuff is live event based. So mm-hmm. if wrestlers aren't doing live events, they're not ordering shirts. If they're not doing this, yeah. this is not that big deal that we have been working on is at a halt because they canceled everything until June, you know? And so it's like, Oh boy, what do I do? Yeah. So we, we tossed the, <laughs> tossed all the money we had at this. We are either going down in flames See, or yeah, baby. Be the best ever, you know? Well, and this, and, is, um, this is why these conversations I think are so critical because I feel like we live in a world where we just observe what people are doing and we, we think they got lucky and we got screwed. And the reality is both you and I in the last two months lost out on probably our biggest months of the year. Just yeah, gone. No, just like, like, by far. <laughs> I mean, I, do you, do you know that right now I have three months worth of, imagine I get on a plane two or three times a week. I have three months 
of plane flights that I prepaid for, for gigs I'm not getting paid for because they don't exist anymore. And the airlines have given me a credit. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like, but I say that because like when, when my special comes out, I don't even know where it's going to live yet. I have an idea of where I want it to live, but when it comes out and that works, people will write it off as like, Oh, he got lucky. No, I spent every dime I had before this pandemic. (laughs) Right. (laughs) To make a thing that that maybe I just made the most expensive YouTube video I'll, I'll ever make. I don't know, but like yeah, it, it's yeah. something you got to do something. Yeah, no, it's it is not it's not lucky at all. Like there there are things that are. Uh, it's like that alchemist thing. Like if you're if you are taking the steps, the universe yeah. rises to meet you. Mm. There are those things. Like yeah, yeah, that guy bought me pancakes, but that was after four months of me doing like, I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. And it, so it's not until you take that first step right. that that stuff starts to happen. That's how you get the momentum on the field is you have to take the first step. Right. It's not going to fall in your lap. Mm-hmm. And another thing that like during this, you know, all this time of like, I've been working on my prison body, you know, <laughs> it's cute. very much the same way. Yeah. You don't look at someone that is like super fit and yeah. go, Oh, they're just lucky. Mm-hmm. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. There might be some genetics involved. Right. Yeah, they might have they might be at a point where they can work out and spend a lot more time than you, but they all started at the same place. Yeah. You know, they all started at like, okay, I think I want to work on my body, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same with everything, man. It it takes that hard work. So, I uh I I've been telling people, I'm coming out of this uh quarantine uh hard as a rock, sweet as honey, and lit AF. <laughs> <laughs> so good, man. It's so good. Any any but, other like thoughts you would want to share with people who are like sitting at home going like what the hell do I do now? Cuz I feel like that's where a lot of people in our world are right now. They're just like I mean yeah. even I I did um I did an interview with uh with with someone who had come out recently who's like done all the things. Like literally everything. Like got his own specials, done all this crap. Wow. And I was interviewing him and I honestly got into a moment where I kind of got in my head during the conversation because I was like, this dude has done everything right. He's crushed it. He's worked his ass off and he's also in the same boat. Like he can't. Yeah. You're going to have a special coming out in two weeks and he can't tour it. Like, what do you, you right. know what I mean? Right. So it's tough. What, what would you, what would you say to people who are just sitting there and like going, I don't even know what that first step is. I don't know what to do. Well, the, this, I don't, I don't remember where I saw this or, or, whatever. But, uh, the Chinese word for crisis, I believe is two characters side by side. Okay. One of them is danger. And one of them is opportunity. Ah. And so that's obviously where we're at. Yeah. 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 There is no doubt. I mean, even this morning, it took me an hour to get my motivation straight to be like, wait, I can do this. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, because yeah. So we had our biggest week of sales a couple of weeks back, but that's just keeping us afloat. Right. That's not yeah, like yeah, yeah. a huge victory. That is like, okay, that's a W and we get another week to exist, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so what's buddy. next? So there is a danger. And so don't like you be gracious with yourself because I find that it can be paralyzing mm-hmm. to sit on the couch and be like, I should be doing this. 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 And you think of all the things that you could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no end. There's a book that I'm 75% done writing Okay. that I'm like, oh, well, I'll finish the book right now. Yeah. But it's like, it's just, it's not it. It's not it mm-hmm. because there, there is, there is danger. There's stuff going on. Yep. Money is scarce. Opportunity is, you know, what you thought you were going to do is gone, but you have to find where is that opportunity? Yeah. Where is, where is the opportunity in this danger for you specifically? Yeah. And like, what is it? And so it's a going inward and thinking about it and just getting the right mind. And this is so weird. Like and anytime I talk to Zach, he always gets on me about this because I still quote scripture to him all the time. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro, it's true. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's like capital T true. Right. It's not like factually true, whatever, but a proverb's a proverb, bro. <laughs> and so like, this verse came to my mind the other day, Proverbs 25, two, yeah. it is the glory of God, universe, whatever, <laughs> to conceal a matter and it is the glory of kings to mm-hmm. uncover it there is and that is what makes life so awesome is uncovering the treasure uncovering right, right. the thing yeah. what's the idea what's the thing yeah and 
And the th- what, what's wild is it's already in your mind right now. Like whoever's mm-hmm. listening, like they already know that thing, right. but they don't know how to do it. And so, because it feels a little bit out of their reach and that's what the, is so awesome about the universe. That's what's so awesome about life is yeah. that it does take effort. It does mm-hmm. take putting yourself out there. Oh, there's somebody that you think you're in love with. You kind of have to tell them, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. there's a business that you want to start. You kind of have to start. Yeah. And that's, it's not just going to fall in your lap. It, the proverb didn't say the glory of the universe is to just dump whatever you want in your lap. <laughs> <laughs> you right? know? It's yeah. the glory of the universe, the glory of life. The, and that's that, you know, that uh, the Hebrew, it's kabod, the heaviness, the weight, right. the good stuff, the gold of yeah. life is that it's just a little bit out of reach. Mm. And that's what's awesome about being a human is reaching for it. Yeah. And like, I got it. So yeah, be cool. It's dangerous out there right now. It's okay to feel like a little baby every now and then. Feel like a little <laughs> baby every morning. Right. But then realize that you're a king. Realize that you're a lion. Realize that there's something out there. You just have to take that one little step. And when you do that, then stuff starts happening. Oh, so figure so out what good, that opportunity man. is for you. That's so good, dude. You're going to go ahead and pass the, the, the time. Di- <laughs> My sermon is over. I still got the preaching, miss. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, man. I'm so freaking fired up. I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to wrap this. I'm going to tell people to go check out everything you're doing. So I want to plug, yeah. I want to plug what you got going on. Uh, yeah. but, then, but, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm purposely going to end our conversation like 10 minutes short. Cause I just want a little more of this just for me. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to, we're going to get personal with some stuff I'm working on. Okay. So. <laughs> Where, t- Jonathan, tell people how they can check out what you're doing, what projects you got going on, what products you're releasing. Where do they go? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Lapelia.com. That's my digital lemonade stand where we do all the dumb stuff. That's where um, everything is sold out now. It's it's gone. Uh, so like all the cool stuff we did a couple weeks ago, <laughs> it's, you missed it. Sorry. Um, but we're always doing more. Uh, we got some some cool stuff coming up soon. Um, I, the store is open right now with some stuff. So, I mean, go take a look, whatever. Um, but then also, uh, Jonathan Bowles on Instagram. Um, I'm like redoing my website and everything like that because one of the things that I, my opportunity in this yeah. is to help people with where they're at yeah. to, you know, Ultimately, I, yeah, I own a business. I own a brand. We help other companies, but I'm a professional encourager. I'm the pastor of disaster. I, I am the, <laughs> the voice that you want to have in your corner and yeah. uh, helping you figure out what you want to do and helping you do it. So I, I do coach on, you know, and do that kind of stuff. And so send me a message, send me an email. And uh, I would love to hear what you got going on and help any way I can. That's so good, buddy. I got I to gotta tag you with one more thing here because you said something as you were plugging what you got coming up here. Yeah. You, you t- you're talking about the fact that the things that you made were gone. Like one of the things I love about what you do is you don't like ideas are not precious. They're expendable. So you, everything's limited quantity. Everything's limited run. Yeah. Everything is here today, gone tomorrow. Can you just give us like 30 seconds of thoughts on, cause so many people are like, when I get inspired, when I have an idea then, and then they put all this time in like, it's like that idea is their baby rather than just making something. Oh yeah. No, you, you have to let, you have to let go. You cannot be attached. And there, there are you, you like, yeah, it is part of you. You're putting it out in the world, but it's after a while you have to get used to it. Like, and there's some stuff we put out that is a complete and total failure, but I loved it. Yeah. And I'm so glad it exists, but uh, no, it's, it's throwing spaghetti against the wall. Yeah, baby. Just keep going until something sticks, Yeah, but then just don't ever be too attached to it. You know uh, it's, you know, it, cause you want it to keep going like yeah. a river. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're not going to see the same drop go past you more than once. <laughs> right. <laughs> <You> right. <know? laughs> so good. Friends go check out Jonathan. I know right now there's some people who could use a little coaching, a little encouragement, a little advice yes. for their specific situation. I mean, I just think what a great opportunity, like how, how awesome would it be? I know that right now everything we've shared and that you've shared is going to be impactful for folks, but to be able to have you speak kind of directly into their specific yeah. situation is beautiful. So friends, go check it out. Jonathan, thank you so much. I'm going to steal you right now and get some coaching yes. on my own. 